inescapably, inescapable, 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 inescapably foreign. Redneck. Is, is there a term for New Zealand rednecks? Like, is there a different word for it that you got there? Or yes, it's called bogan. So bogan, it's like, like in Australia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So in Australia, New Zealand, it's like, yeah, Bogan's the same thing. And it's like, Bogan is basically their version of a redneck. So it's like, that's that's a common thing here. How would you compare uh, Bogan's to Georgian rednecks? So New Zealand Bogan's <laughs> and, and Georgian rednecks, how would you compare Man, it to? Probably the only difference is down here, it's like they drive like like shitty Subarus and Skylines and in Georgia it's all like just jacked up pickup trucks so that that's probably the <laughs> biggest difference aside from that like really similar like really really similar interesting <laughs> um and w where do you kind of fit in in New Zealand do you feel like you fit in with a certain group there or do you feel like a complete outsider oh man it's it's funny because like since I've I've been here like I mean like, I, I've definitely changed and grow, grown a lot since I've been here. I mean, it's been, I came over in, to New Zealand in 2016. Um, and I guess my, like, my journey of how I got here, I'll, yeah, I guess I'll share share a little bit of that. So, um, this would have probably been, like, like a year or two after uh, I met you, actually, after you'd left New York. Um, I basically just got into a bit of a dark place there where I was, I was drinking way too much. I was partying way too hard. And um, I was just like, I need to get out of here. Well, this place is, like, just doing just bad things to me. I just wasn't happy with the way that I was kind of growing and my mindset and everything was just bad. So, um, I kind of ended up like playing around and getting a job on a cruise ship in Hawaii. Um, I figured that a cruise ship was probably like my best option to get out and actually travel more. Cause I wanted to travel. That was my big thing. You know, that was one of the main reasons why I, um, actually pursued acting in the first place. Cause I was like, Hey, this will actually provide enough you know, enough income for me if I can nail this that I can actually travel a lot more and that'll be awesome. So I looked at the ship idea and I was just like, that's probably a good way for me to get paid and travel at the same time. And I <clears throat> landed this job as a waiter on one in Hawaii and I was just like, all right, sweet. I'm going to go live in Hawaii for a while and um, went there and did that. And that um, was a five month contract on the ship. And then after that, I came uh, went to uh, to Thailand on a one-way ticket. Um, you know, I was like, all right, I've got some money now. I'm going to do this traveling thing. And um, when I was in Thailand, that was where I met my partner, actually, and she's a Kiwi. So that's how I ended up here. Um, we, yeah, kind of met her. We traveled together for like three weeks. Oh, just for, spent... for English learners, okay. if any English learners are listening to this, Kiwi is someone from New Zealand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some yeah. people are like, well, you're dating a Kiwi? <laughs> Yeah, cl cl yeah, good to clarify that. So like the other day I said like, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go snack on a kiwi, and people were like, like the the fruit, like shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I guess since your partner's a kiwi, you got. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, so good, man. But but yeah, I, um, when I was over there, then I spent another month in Nepal and some more time traveling Thailand, and um, we gave the long distance thing a shot, and so I moved over here in 2016 to join her and. I'm sure we'll get into more of the logistics of the immigration later, but, um, uh, but yeah, like when I got over here, I was still very much in like the party scene and stuff like that. And New Zealand has a really big drinking culture. Um, like, especially like the universities, like Dunedin, um, Otago university, very, very big party and drinking culture. Um, but yeah, that, so I really kind of moved into that it, very easily when I got here because I love to drink, I love to party. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, this is, I found my people. Um, <laughs> so, but then it's like, you know, I kind of got to a point where we started to like kind of move out of that and stuff and <clears throat> I guess transition into more of a, um, I guess kind of like a young professional space and started getting a bit more ambitious with like our goals and the lot of stuff we wanted to achieve in life. And, um, and that was where I actually started to, I guess, um, I guess get a bit of a disconnect. Like, I, I find that I fit in a lot with, like, now anyways, I fit in a lot with, um, basically just people, just like, the, like, kind of the more ambitious folks, um, in New Zealand, which a lot of those do tend to be, uh, be immigrants, I see. Like, a lot of people from, like, South Africa, the UK, America, um, Canada, and people that are just, like, just a bit more ambitious. Um, and, you know, it's, I, I think that's... You know, I, I'm not sure, like, of course, like, there are a lot of people here that are quite ambitious. I mean, you look at, like, you know, like, the the rugby team, the All Blacks here, it's like, that's, you know, the most successful, like, sports team in history or something like that, I think. Like, you know, 
a lot of really like you know big like ambitious stuff like comes out of New Zealand for sure. Um, it's just like I guess like kind of like overall like that's something that like I've I've kind of struggled to connect with quite a bit in the society here. Yeah. I know what you mean because I I've had this a similar experience here in Spain and we actually talk I talked about that with uh, my friend Ruben uh, on the podcast yesterday. Um, <clears throat> And we were talking about his experience in England and then my experience in Canada, how there the dream for many people is to become an entrepreneur or to just have your own business. And everyone is focused on that. Whereas here in Spain, the dream is to be a government employee and what they call a funcionario here, right? Because you get a very comfortable lifestyle. You don't have to work very long hours, it's really difficult to get fired. And that's kind of the goal here. Um, so in New Zealand, since you're saying like, it feels like people aren't as driven for these entrepreneurial things as well. And you have this kind of more laid back lifestyle. Are the people there then um, trying to become government employees? Is that kind of the goal? Or is it just to have like a cushy corporate job? Or what's kind of the goal there? That's, oh, that's so interesting. I really want to ask more about that. That difference with with Canada and Spain but I'll hold that but um I think that like so in, in New Zealand like labor laws are very very much on the side of the employee um like it is quite difficult to get fired in New Zealand um I'm being mm -hmm. perfectly honest um because I've been like you know in employment positions management positions um and it's yeah like if, if you have someone like that you you want to move out like it is a very difficult lengthy process to make that happen um, and it, ta it takes a lot of time, a lot of headspace. It's not like back in, you know, the States or, um, maybe Canada to some degree where it's like, if someone's gone, like, you know, like not good for the team or a good fit for the culture or, you know, just not performing, it's like they can be gone, which, you know, that can be, that can be both good and bad. Like, 